Hello everyone, welcome to the Warzone. I'm Scruffy and this is Scruffy Tales. And uh, I think I might upset a couple of Americans potentially with this video uh, because I do believe that the Bradley replacement will have a serious issue and the issue is its main gun. And the Bradley will be replaced by the XM30. What is the XM30? Well, that's not decided yet. Uh, it has uh, had some problems, the program. Uh, and as it says here, the aggressive pace and stringent objectives of the program were seen as unrealistic by potential competitors. The program placed much of the cost burden of development on private contractors, causing many major contractors to forego participation. Acknowledging this, in February of 2020, the Army, American Army, announced it would restart the program with more responsibility for funding being taken on by the service, because in 2020 the, uh, uh, the program was shut down uh, because people were... Uh, you know, the uh, private companies did not live up to the standards that the American army were, was looking for. Eventually, the program got started again. And uh, we can see here what the U.S. Army, what they're looking for. They want a vehicle with an unmanned turret with either a 50 millimeter autocannon or a 30 millimeter autocannon uh, or chain gun. And uh, re a reduced crew, only two, uh, uh, with a driver and a commander, or a commander slash gunner, I would assume, uh, with space to carry six infantrymen. And in 2023, the army eventually allowed the uh, Rhine uh, allowed Rhine Metal and GDLS to go forward in the competition, and they will now move on to try and uh, provide the best vehicle for the Americans, and then they can pick the best vehicle and go ahead with putting a turret on it with what appears to be a 50 millimeter chain gun. And while I'm convinced that the vehicle itself will be one of the best platforms on the planet, uh, no doubt about it. The gun uh, does raise some questions, and uh, so we will now move on to those questions. So the gun will be a 50 millimeter chain gun called the XM913. And this gun is essentially a modified version of the older standard 35 millimeter chain gun. Uh, and it's based on uh, that chain gun and its 50 millimeter super shot conversion. But the thing is, they have altered the ammunition, right? So they have this old weapon system that you can convert uh, from 35 millimeter to 50 millimeter. And they have, in addition to that, uh, changed the uh, ammunition for this older weapon system. And I'm guessing that they have altered the uh, round itself so that you can fit more ammo in the vehicle. Uh, that would be my guess. Uh, because the standard 15 millimeter super shot uh, uses a modified 35 millimeter round. Uh, same size, uh, it's just that the round itself is full neck, right? So as you can see on the image here, it kind of uh, narrows uh, from uh, uh, full size to then narrow into the 35 millimeter uh, round itself. Well, the 50 millimeter super shot, it's full neck. It, it keeps going all the way up to the bullet itself, right? So what did they do with the new round? The new round is still the same caliber and same... Uh, width and uh, all of that, but it is 100 millimeters shorter than the previous rounds, right? So you still have the 35 millimeter chain gun and the 50 millimeter super shot conversion, but you change the round itself and you make it slightly shorter so that you, what I assume 
be, to be the reason is so that you can fit more ammo in the vehicle. And so this is where I think we start to see the problem with the new gun. This is the 35 millimeter, by the way. Uh, this is represented here. As you can see, you have the cartridge and it narrows off. And then you have the bullet. So this is the narrowing part here. Uh, yeah, standard 35 millimeter round. So what you can do with this chain gun is if you replace the barrel uh, for uh, the 50 millimeter super shot, you can then fire this round instead. And as you can see, if you compare these two uh, lovely images, it is full neck, right? It continue, It goes all the way up and then you get a larger bullet on top of this size of cartridge. And the beautiful thing here is swapping the barrel uh, allows you to fire this from the same feeding system that fires this, right? Uh, so all you need to do is swap the barrel of the on the turret and then you can swap uh, from this ammo to this and the feeding system within the turret can handle this round uh, without any issues at all. And if you then move on to the new gun, the 50 millimeter XM913, uh, which is essentially the same system that fires this, uh, you can see the difference here. It is 100 millimeter shorter uh, than the standard rounds. So instead of being uh, 330 millimeters, it is 220 millimeters. And as you can see, that leaves a lot less propellant in the shell itself than compared to these two. And you have more mass uh, than the 35 millimeter. So you have more mass than the 35 millimeter, and you also have less propellant than the 35 millimeter, right? That leaves you with less kinetic energy to launching uh, the round itself downrange, be it a uh, high explosive, a programmable round, or an anti-tank round, right? A saber round. So even if you narrow this down to a saber round, you still have less propellant uh, behind it than on the 35 millimeter round or the uh, standard 50 millimeter super shot, right? And this is what I think is an issue or could potentially be an issue for the next infantry fighting vehicle uh, in the American service. So the new gun, its main focus appears to be to combat infantry and drones, but it will have a reduced ability to combat armor. The round contains less propellant like we just saw and will be unable to deliver enough kinetic energy to be a credible threat to armor in close encounters. This will mean that the IFV will be at a disadvantage against enemy armor in woodlands and in urban settings where you will be unable to effectively rely on an ATGM, the anti-tank guided missile. The perfect example is, of course, the encounter in Stepova, Ukraine, when a Bradley took on a Russian T-90 main battle tank. While the exchange of fire was impressive to look at, in the end, the Bradley did not score any penetrating hits. It was a flaw in the T-90's design that made the turret spin, and it was pure luck that the T-90 did not manage to spot the Bradley and end the fight. The T-90 drove into a tree on purpose to stop the spinning turret, and all three crews survived and the tank could have been recovered for repairs at a later stage. If we had replaced the Bradley with a Swedish CV-90 with its 40mm uh, autocannon, the outcome would more than likely have been very different because the 40mm autocannon was specifically chosen for the Swedish CV-90 for its ability or capability of penetrating a tank's armor with flanking shots. So had a CV-90 been able to open fire on a T-90, just like the Bradley did in Stepova, 
the T90 would have been destroyed. But as we saw in Stepove, the Bradley opened fired about 30 times at the T90 and did not penetrate the armor. Sweden, South Korea and the UK are using a 40mm gun for the reason of not only having programmable ammunition, but to also have acceptable armor penetration when caught in close combat ranges. This is an ability the next American IFV will not possess. The new 50mm will more than likely even have less armor penetration than the standard 35mm. Programmable ammunition is nothing new and is used by both the Swedish and Korean 40mm guns. The Swedish programmable ammunition type has for instance six modes of attack to deal with IFVs, to deliver airbursts over trenches, to take on helicopters and drones, and even incoming missiles. So these older 40mm systems provide everything that the new 50mm auto uh, chain gun will also provide, except they have very capable armor penetration. Something that the new 50mm on the American IV will not have. But this is when I think many Americans will start writing in the comment section that the Bradley, as well as its replacement, will have capable anti-tank guided missiles to deal with tanks. So we will uh, take a look at that. What is an ATGM and why do you need a good gun? Well, an ATGM is essentially a gun with two rounds in its magazine and it has extremely long reload time. And you have to remain stationary to open fire you must remain exposed to incoming fire up until the missile hits its target. And it cannot reliably be used in woods or an urban area where distances are extremely short and there are too many obstacles in the way. While we can expect the next American IFV to have a very capable and advanced ATG system, it will still not be a good option to engage enemy armor at close range. This is where an IFV must have a powerful gun to be a threat to heavy armor. And it appears as if the next American IFV will be severely lacking in being a credible threat in close engagements. Without a doubt, the next American IFV will be state of the art and the vehicle itself will be one of the best platforms on the planet. And looking at the newly upgraded Bradley, we can assume that the eventual replacement will be even more impressive. It will have very capable active protection systems, extremely deadly anti-tank missiles, excellent armor, and a full host of advanced gadgets. But in all honesty, I have my doubts about its main gun. Feel free to rip everything I just said apart uh, I mean, explain to me just why this new 50mm gun will be amazing and why it will, uh, you know, be everything the American army needs, why it will be able to defeat armor uh, up close at range and what have you, and why you can rely on ATGMs despite potentially the gun itself not being able to be a threat to armor, heavy armor that is, and uh, so on. I mean, let it rip, uh, and I'll take a look at it. And maybe uh, I, you know, I'm I like to respond in the comments. I will probably respond to your comments. Uh, with all that said, that will be the end of the video. And uh, well, in the end, size does matter. See you around.